people are calling it the green retinoid. I'm going to let the doctor read this from Facebook. I will give it a go. So this is from Mackenzie. So Mackenzie says, I keep seeing all of these new ingredients in skincare, and I don't know what they're for or if I need them. For example, the other day I saw the ingredient Bacuchiol in a product. What is that? And so the fun thing about skincare is that there are always new ingredients, new products, new applications, but really to know what you're using, you have to be able to read the label. So if we look at this label here, we see Bacuchiol. So it's right here. And what Sounds is that? Sounds like something I chop up and pair with <laughs> Daikon in a nice ramen bowl or something. You're <laughs> absolutely right, because it's plant-based. So a lot of people, Yay. So a lot of people are calling it the green retinoid because it's from huh. a plant. And so it's made from the seeds and the leaves of a Sorelia corfolia plant. And so what I love about it is although it doesn't look like a retinol, the molecule, it's what we call a functional analog. So it acts like a retinol, although it doesn't look like it. So you're going to get all of those benefits, huh. but what's key is without the irritation. So you're not going to have that irritation, but you're going to get all of those benefits. And for my patients who really love natural skincare, right. they love to reduce That's a the, good product. Exactly. Yeah. They yeah. want to reduce those toxins in their cool. skincare, which is critical. This is a great product. So let's look at another label so I can show you guys another ingredient that you're going to see more of. So here we see niacinamide. So most people probably have heard of niacinamide. It's a vitamin B3, but it's becoming more popular. For years, it's been overshadowed by vitamin C. So vitamin C is a popular antioxidant. Vitamin B3 is also an antioxidant, and it has some beautiful properties. It smooths the skin. It improves elasticity. Huh. It gets rid of dark spots. It fights free radicals. But what I love about it is that it's really anti-inflammatory. So again, if you're oh, sensitive, great. if you're that's sensitive, great. it's for you. If you're acne prone, it's for you. I get you. hives and all kinds of stuff like that. Exactly. So it's a fantastic exactly. Natalie is in our front row. Natalie has our next question. Yes. This pretty lady right here. Hi. Hi um, so I'm always trying the best new stuff in skincare, and I have so many things at home, my bathroom is full. And I just want to know, should I consistently be using the same product mm -hmm. or trying new things? So that's a common question, and it's overwhelming because there are so many products out there. So it depends on what you're using. So things like your cleanser, for instance, you're going to know instantly if that works for you. If you use it and you feel dry and tight, it's too harsh. Get rid of it, try something else. Mm -hmm. Your moisturizer, you're going to know instantly if it's the right hydration for you. If you're still full dry, try something else. If it's working for you, you'll see the full benefit in about two weeks, mm -hmm. but instantly you'll know if it works. Right. There are other ingredients. So we've all heard of retinol and retinoid. Right. So those are kind of the gold standard for anti-aging. That takes a little bit of time because what it does, it's upregulating genes that help to improve your skin turnover, so it helps to get all of those you good need, benefits. You need like a two month or three month cycle for it to it, make any difference. Exactly, yeah. you need time. So the first two <clears throat> weeks, what you'll notice, you'll get a little dry, you'll get some shedding of those dead skin cells, but you'll start to see your initial results at about four to eight weeks. Okay. So at about four to eight you weeks, to you'll start to see. It. Exactly. But when it comes to creams, like you're saying that these would last for several months, mm -hmm. uh, the jars this size, mm -hmm. Should they be refrigerated? How long can you keep them? Um, I, I never let my products go in direct sunlight. Like, for, I, I would never, if I went for a facial, I would never leave a bag in a hot car exactly. for hours. Exactly. So, you know, a lot of the products are made to be really stable. They understand mm -hmm. that we have busy lives, and they're made to be really stable. But what I recommend for all products, especially products like your retinol, which has mm -hmm. lots of active ingredients, you want to make sure you keep them in a cool, dark area. You don't have to refrigerate them. And six months, a year, do they lose, they do lose their integrity? They lose efficacy. Most creams, you can give it about a year. Okay. About a year. Okay. And so, I was just curious. Yeah. yeah. So, and with your I go health. through mine way more than a year. <laughs> and, and I go through mine every two months tops. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And we want them to last because we need to use them for a long period of time. Right. So we're going to get, again, in that four to eight weeks, we're going to get that initial. But if you, let's say you're treating something like acne and you want to see improvement in your acne, you need to give it about 12 weeks. If you're using a prescription, you might get it a little faster, but about 12 weeks over the counter. And if we're going for all of those anti-aging benefits, so the reduction of your wrinkles, you're going to have to give it six months. So wow. six months, you need a product that can last. So something that can really stand on its own.